Flat Stanley, His Original Adventure. Chapter three, Stanley the Kite. Chapter three, Stanley the Kite. Mr. Lambchop had always liked to take the boys out with him on Sunday afternoons to a museum or roller skating in the park. But it was different when they were crossing the streets or moving about in the crowds. Stanley and Arthur would often be jostled from his side and Mr. Lambchop worried about speeding taxis or that hurrying people might accidentally knock them down. It was easier after Stanley got flat. Mr. Lambchop discovered that he could roll Stanley up without hurting him at all. He would tie a piece of string around Stanley to keep him from unrolling and make a little loop in the string for himself. It was as simple as carrying a parcel and he could hold on to Arthur with the other hand. Stanley did not mind being carried because he had never much liked to walk. Arthur didn't like to walk either, but he had to. It made him mad. One Sunday afternoon in the street, they met Ralph Jones, an old college friend of Mr. Lambchop's. Well, George, I see you have brought some wallpaper, Mr. Jones said. Going to decorate your house, I suppose? Wallpaper, said Mr. Lambchop. Oh no, this is my son Stanley. He undid the string and Stanley unrolled. How do you do, Stanley said. Nice to meet you, young feller, the man said. George, he said to Mr. Lambchop, that boy is flat. Smart too, Mr. Lambchop said. Stanley is third from the top in his class at school. Pooey, said Arthur. This is my younger son, Arthur, Mr. Lambchop said, and he will apologize for his rudeness. Arthur could only blush and apologize. Mr. Lambchop rolled Stanley up again and they set out for home. It rained quite hard while they were on the way. Stanley, of course, hardly got wet at all, just around the edges, but Arthur got soaked. Late that night, Mr. and Mrs. Lambchop heard a noise out in the living room. They found Arthur lying on the floor near the bookcase. He had piled a great many volumes of the Encyclopedia Britannica on top of himself. Put some more on me, Arthur said. When he saw them, don't just stand there, help me. Mr. and Mrs. Lambchop sent him back to bed, but the next morning they spoke to Stanley. Arthur can't help being jealous, they said. Be nice to him. You're his big brother after all. The next Sunday, Stanley and Arthur went to the park by themselves. The day was sunny, but windy too. And many older brothers were flying beautiful, enormous kites with long tails, made in all the colors of the rainbow. Arthur sighed, oh, someday he said, I will have a big kite and I will win a flight, a kite flying contest and be famous like everyone else. Nobody knows who I am these days. Stanley remembered what his parents had said he went to a boy whose kite was broken and borrowed a large spool of string. Can you fly me, Arthur, he said. Come on. He attached a string to himself and gave Arthur the spool to hold. He ran lightly across the grass, sideways to get up speed, and then he hurried to meet the breeze. Up, 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 went Stanley, being a kite. He knew just how to manage on the gust of wind. He faced 
fall into the wind if he wanted to rise and let it take him from behind when he wanted to speed. He had only to turn his thin edge to the wind carefully, a little at a time, so that it did not hold him. And... Then he would slip gracefully down toward the earth again. Arthur let out all the string and Stanley soared high above the trees. A beautiful sight in his red shirt and blue trousers against the pale blue sky. Everyone in the park stood still to watch. Stanley swooped right, then left in a long match swoops. He held his arms by his sides and zoomed at the ground like a rocket and curved up again toward the sun. He side slipped and circled and made figure eights and crosses and a star. Nobody has ever flown the way. Stanley Lamb Chop flew that day. Probably no one ever will again. After a while, of course, people grew tired of watching and Arthur got tired of running about with the empty spool. Stanley went right on through, showing off. Three boys came up to Arthur and invited him to join them for a hot dog and some soda pop. Arthur left the spool wedged in the fork of a tree. He did not notice while he was eating the hot dog that the wind was blowing the string and tangling it about the tree. The string got shorter and shorter, but Stanley did not realize how low he was until leaves brushed his feet. And then it was too late. He got stuck in the branches. 15 minutes passed before Arthur and the other boys heard his cries and climbed up to set him free. Stanley would not speak to his brother that evening, and at bedtime, even though Arthur had apologized, he was still cross. Along with Mr. Lambchop in the living room, Mrs. Lambchop sighed and shook her head. You're at the office all day having fun, she said. You don't realize what I go through with these boys. They're very difficult. Kids are like that, Mr. Lambchop said. Phases. Be patient, dear.